Training for strength has always been a part of humanity for centuries. From the ancient Greeks wrestling to the 19th century figure Eugene Sando who popularized strength training in Europe and America. Gyms started packing weights and resistance training became a part of sports conditioning and military training. After the aerobics boom in the 20th century, resistance training became recognized as health-promoting activity, emphasizing the importance of adding muscle mass. From the gym bro bodybuilding culture, resistance training slowly paves its way to becoming the new norm for a healthy body. Biohackers are getting jacked, being eager on lifting weights. New doctors eating red meat supposedly filled with muscle building compounds. Podcasts emphasizing muscle as a longevity organ. Skeletal muscle is your primary site for glucose metabolism. Anti-aging experts showcasing lean muscle mass as the way to go. It slowly becomes clear that gaining muscle is the new way to elevate health and live longer. Hopefully, it becomes the norm and everyone gets to rush this natural anti-aging juice. Higher muscle mass is linked to lower mortality rates. There is an ongoing debate whether muscle is overrated for longevity. But if you really look at the science, there is quite a clear trend between having more muscle and dying later. This means people with longer muscle can sustain functionality and other aspects of metabolism which allow them to function and be vital for longer. There are various different mechanisms for why this exists. Partially, it is linked to higher grip strength, which is an important indicator for longevity, having better metabolic health and metabolic function, and also being able to move more and keeping the mobility or the being active phase in life for longer. Low skeletal mass index was significantly associated with an increased risk of all-cause mortality, particularly in adults with a higher body mass index. Total mortality was significantly lower in the fourth quartile of muscle mass index compared to the first. Second one is stabilizing blood sugar levels. Having more muscle is going to generally improve insulin sensitivity to an extent. See, increased glycemic variability, or what we like to call glucose on a roller coaster, having your glucose to go up and down, sharp increases and sharp drops is detrimental to metabolic health. It is the first sign of metabolic dysfunction, which means your body cannot produce enough energy from the calories and nutrients it's ingesting. Such metabolic function leads to gaining more weight, obesity, diabetes, and all these other sort of metabolic issues. A low amount of muscle mass puts one at an increased risk of metabolic dysfunction. Why though? Well, you see, the muscle acts as a glucose disposal organ. This means anytime we have carbohydrates like rice, pasta, toast, or oats, for example, there is a concomitant increase in blood glucose afterwards. Insulin is secreted to transport that glucose into tissues and cells. Now the thing is, when you pack more muscle, your body is able to store more glucose faster, offsetting the elevation in blood glucose that could have occurred otherwise if you didn't have as much muscle. So in other words, the muscle acts as a tank for glucose. Particularly after training, the muscle is pretty hungry for glucose and most of the glucose ingested is gonna go and be absorbed and sucked up by the muscle instead of elevating blood sugar levels, which is good news for metabolic health. The more muscle one has, the better their ability to utilize glucose. Think of it like a tank. Your body having more muscle has increased capacity, larger tanks that could help you store more glucose. The muscle is a major organ that mediates glucose uptake by GLUT4 transporters stimulating glucose uptake. Here's what happens when the exact same amount of glucose is ingested in a muscular body. Blood sugar stays relatively stable without major spikes compared to a non-muscular body elevating blood glucose over the levels considered healthy. Third thing is increasing metabolic rate, which muscles do pretty good job at. See, the more muscle one packs, 
there is higher chances that person leans towards a faster or higher metabolic rate. Metabolic rate represents metabolism, so how many calories we're burning during rest or on a daily basis throughout all activities that we do. Metabolic rate depends on numerous factors, like fidgeting when you're cold contributes to it, how good you sleep and how well balanced your hormones, particularly thyroid hormones are. It also depends on total activity levels, whether it was high intensity, low intensity and total volume. All of these things affect how many calories your body burns, both at rest and during the activity. Now the thing with muscle is, the muscle is more metabolically active tissue than fat, meaning it burns more calories than fat. In general, more muscular frame requires strength training, which is initially going to burn some more calories and improve general metabolic function, but also increased protein intake. And protein is interesting because it has increased or larger thermogenic effect compared to carbs or fats. So all of these things that are required for a muscular body, like lifting weights and eating more protein, lead to a slightly higher metabolic rate. If you were to compare one pound of fat and one pound of muscle for how many calories they burn, the fat would burn about two to three calories per hour and the muscle would burn about seven to 10, which is about three to four fold. So the higher the muscle protein synthesis in the body through resistance training and protein, the leaner or the more muscular one's physique is, the higher the metabolic rate. And this loop just goes up to a certain extent, which means that packing more muscle is going to allow us to shred off more fat off our frame and have increased metabolic rate, meaning we can eat more. Some studies on appetite and thermogenesis show that protein is effective in promoting satiety. Protein has higher thermogenic effect of food at 20 to 30 percent compared to carbohydrates at 5 to 10 and fats at 0 to 3 percent. Research suggests that there is a potential 5% increase in resting metabolic rate within 9 months due to strength training, although variability was wide. Next one is, the muscle is aging protective organ. What does this mean? See, resistance training to me seems like one of the best anti-aging juices one can consume. With age, as you know, we shrink we lose muscle and our bone density drops. This makes us less mobile, more fragile. Such loss of muscle, also called sarcopenia, leads to a significant drop in strength. And drop in strength shows decrease in vitality. It's one of the markers of longevity. The faster it drops, the faster one becomes less mobile and more fragile. And resistance training provides the sufficient or most effective stimulus for us to increase strength and also work on recovering the muscle and increasing muscle fibers. It helps us to grow, maintain and improve muscle through muscle protein synthesis, provided it's supported with sufficient sleep, calorie intake and enough protein. So keeping our muscles strong is one of the core elements to extend in life or longevity. The mechanical load from resistance training doesn't just make the muscle fibers grow and regenerate, but also stimulates bone forming cells, which increase bone density, making our bones healthier and stronger. So in a way, resistance training seems like the antidote to shrinking, to falling and becoming fragile. Since you watched this video, I deem you're interested in the science of optimizing health, longevity and performance. Got good news for you. We've distilled science into short letters. Now you can get hacks into improving sleep score, mitochondrial function, improving focus and burning fat faster. Everything one wants. And until we hit 1000 subscribers, it's free you can join. We've just upgraded our newsletter, Keys to Vitality. Now you can join more than 500 active readers getting one key insight to increase energy, improve daily function and unlock vitality. Four minutes every Saturday morning. If you're into living a fulfilled, long life filled with meaningful experiences, I believe being vibrant plays a major part in it. So, highly recommend it.
age slower, feel better, and be smarter. Scan this code, links in the description. Resistance training can reduce the stress on the joint via improved muscle strength, mass, and functionality, which uh, helps absorb and distribute this force. A meta-analysis of 13 randomized control trials shows resistance training significantly improves grip strength, gait speed, and skeletal muscle index in people with age-related sarcopenia. Next one is promoting movement and gaining functional strength. See, a big piece of longevity is keeping your cardiovascular musculoskeletal system running, functioning. A precursor to that is moving more. And having stronger muscles are kind of requirement for you to be able to move more. Muscles contract to provide structural support to the body during movement and also help you stabilize your joints and push off the ground when you're going and taking your steps, running, jumping or whatever it is. So to an extent, losing muscle via sarcopenia means losing functionality. We're not as able to walk so fast or hike so fast or jump so far, etc. This slowly leads to being overly sedentary, to living in a way that you become fragile and sort of more leaning towards the couch potato lifestyle. On the other hand, strength training, particularly multi-joint strength training, and what I mean by that is doing compound exercises that activate larger amounts of muscle mass and multiple joints at one time, Great examples, the squats and overhead press, pull-ups, deadlifts are all great ways to keep the body strong and functional for longer. A functional strength training lasting only 8 weeks was significant for improvements in balance, functional movement scores, body mass index, body fat and body mass. Next one is increasing testosterone and other anti-aging hormones like growth hormone. See, in the biohacking sphere, testosterone is recognized as this anti-aging juice, as in this anti-aging hormone because it, its levels drop so fast with age, but its effects are so strong to longevity that it's definitely a subject worth tackling. Beyond its function in boosting libido and providing energy, uh, testosterone is also a very important hormone associated to muscle protein synthesis. Higher rates of testosterone seem to be associated to various factors linked to anti-aging, such as higher muscle mass, higher grip strength, higher libido, more energy, and increased bone density. Put it this way, more muscular bodies are generally higher in testosterone because the combination of factors that lead to a more muscular body like increased intake in testosterone, sufficient vitamin D levels, resistance training, optimal sleep, all of these factors contribute to muscle protein synthesis and increase in testosterone in parallel. So there just appears to be a very strong connection between muscle mass, testosterone and resistance training. Inevitably, one leads to another, so train more. Testosterone is the most potent anabolic hormone that stimulates muscle protein synthesis. Its concentration is significantly elevated following a heavy resistance exercise, particularly in men. While the testosterone increase will depend on various factors like the type of exercise, resting, study population, there is a general trend showing exercise increases plasma testosterone levels, particularly in strength training with high muscle mass involved. Last but not least is strength training increases the activation of the nervous system, which is the primary mechanism behind becoming stronger or increasing strength. Logically, one who trains Logically, one who trains with weights, lifting weights or doing any sort of resistance training is going to become stronger over time if progressive load is implemented. While training for muscle mass and training for strength are two completely different concepts, they're tied together very much. 
Generally, both require lifting relatively heavy weights, bringing inseparable results, meaning one who lifts is going to, to a certain extent, increase muscle mass and to a certain extent, increase strength. Training specifically for hypertrophy will sort of push that ratio of benefits more towards gaining muscle and less strength, but strength still will be gained. And adapting the training towards higher loads and less repetitions and lower volume is going to lead to activation of the nervous system, bringing an increase in strength. Generally, lifting weights, even if it's done at a sub-maximal level, it still keeps the nervous system activated, keeps the muscles contracting, and also trains some of the neural aspects like coordination, which are extremely important for longevity. By the way, grip strength is very, very tightly linked to longevity as it's a strong predictor of mortality. When grip strength levels drop very fast, there's also a concomitant increase in mortality rates. Every 5 kilogram decrease in hand grip strength was associated with a hazard ratio of 1.36 for men and 1.49 for women for all-cause mortality. The highest effect was seen for the lowest 20% grip strength group. Another meta-analysis conducted on 42 studies including around 3 million participants showed similar results with grip strength being an independent predictor of all-cause mortality. Now my question to you is, seeing all this data on how important the muscle is, what are you going to do about it? Knowing that higher muscle mass is linked to longevity, helps stabilize glucose levels and improves metabolic function, increases your metabolic rate and fat loss, protects your bones from losing density and sarcopenia, so losing muscle, promotes movement and functional strength, increases testosterone, skyrocketing your libido and energy, improves grip strength and it's a great predictor of mortality. How is your routine about the change? If you're a beginner, hitting the gym for about two times weekly already does a lot. If you're low on protein, next time you go grocery shopping, maybe stack up on some more protein-rich foods, get some protein powders, get some red meat, eggs if you're into it, lentils, tofu, all this kind of stuff, and fix your meal prep so you have meals planned in advance. If your recovery is very slow, maybe you want to consider a red light therapy to some extent, or foam rolling or any sort of other massage, or you want to deep breathe to optimize your sleep, block blue light, whatever it takes. I want you to think of this one thing you can do to improve your weekly routine, to build more muscle, maintain the muscle you have, promote functionality and increase strength. Comment down below what it is. I need more ideas for VitalSend and also you can help the community out by spreading your ideas. Thank you.